troops of the Niger military in a coordinated search operation rescued the abducted Kuriga school children of Chukun local government area of Kaduna State. And experts advocate anyone with a cough for more than two weeks to visit hospitals as World Max International Tuberculosis Day. Plus, federal government provides portable drinking water to some communities in Edo State. And this is the outlook of Panorama today, reaching you from our Abuja studios. I'm Zenret Dingun, and thanks for joining us. We begin with security as troops of the Nigerian military in the early hours of 24th March 2024 working with the local authorities coordinated search operations leading to the rescue of persons abducted from a school at Kuriga in Chikun local government area of Kaduna State. A statement by the Director of Defense Media Operations, Major General Edward Buba says, 137 kidnapped victims comprising 76 females and 61 males were rescued. They were rescued in Zamfara State and are to be transferred to the Kaduna State Government for further action. Similarly, on 21st March 2024, troops rescued 16 pupils, a Marjorie's and a woman kidnapped in Gada local government area of Sakotu State. The rescued victims have been handed over to the Sokoto state government. These efforts, the defense headquarters say, is a demonstration of the armed forces' commitment to rescue other hostages and arrest the terrorists that perpetrated these crimes. The director of defense media operations stressed that efforts are ongoing to track down the culprits responsible for the killings of 18 soldiers in Okwama community in Delta State. Meanwhile, the Kaduna State Governor, Senator Uba Sani, has made an official announcement that the Kuriga school children who were kidnapped have been released. On his official social media handle, the governor announces that the Kuriga school children were released unharmed, appreciating the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinibu, the National Security Advisor, Nuhu Vibadu, the security agencies and all stakeholders for their efforts towards ensuring that the children are back home safely. And President Bola Tinibu welcomes the news of the release of the Kuruga school children in Kaduna State and emphasizes the importance of collaboration between the federal government and states for expected outcomes especially on security matters. The president, in a statement, commends the National Security Advisor, the security agencies, and the Kaduna State Government for the dispatch and diligence with which they handled the situation, noting that in, in spite of incipient urgency, meticulous attention, and tireless dedication are cru cru crucial to the optimal outcomes in cases of mass abductions. President Tinibu also welcomes the release of pupils of Sangaya School in Sokoto State, commending all the parties to the, f to the feet for their valiant efforts. The president assures Nigerians that his administration is deploying detailed strategies to ensure that our schools remain safe, sanctuaries of learning, not, la not layers for wanton abductions. Now, tuberculosis is an infectious disease that infects the lungs or other tissues, compromising the health of the affected person. To ensure the eradication of this deadly disease, 24th of March every year is set aside to create awareness on the dangers associated with tuberculosis and how to prevent it. Lukman Hassan in this report highlights the causes and prevention of tuberculosis as the world commemorates tuberculosis day. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium called mycobacterium tuberculosis. People with active tuberculosis disease in the lungs or voice box can spread the disease by release of tiny droplets that carry the bacteria through the air when they sing, laugh, cough or sneeze. 10 million people are said to be suffering from tuberculosis worldwide. 
with about 1.5 million deaths recorded by the World Health Organization in the year 2020 alone. As a leading cause of death, a research fund treatment in 1940s and 1950s, the cause of death among patients of tuberculosis began to reduce. Tuberculosis is very, very curable. Uh, treatment is free. The government has uh, provided uh, treatment for this free. Uh, in conjunction with uh, many other partners. It's a very um, bad disease, also a challenging disease to, to manage, to treat because of uh, the, the nature of it and it, the way it's uh, communicable. Notice anybody coughing for two weeks, advise that person to go to the hospital. Another sign and symptom is uh, fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite, and night sweat. How aware are Nigerians about the transmission and treatment of tuberculosis? I heard about tuberculosis. I don't know the cause, I don't know the effects, I don't know how they can use drugs to escape from it, I don't know what they can use. I think it's a kind of disease, whether virus or bacteria, that eat up the lungs. And if it is not quickly detected, it might kill the person. With this year's theme for the day, yes, we can end TB is focused on creating awareness on the ways to eradicate tuberculosis in the world. In Ibado, Lokman Hassan, NTA News. Similarly, the need for anyone with a cough that persists for more than two weeks to visit hospitals for tuberculosis tests is being advocated by medical experts in Ibom State. This advocacy is coming as Nigeria joins the global community to mark World Tuberculosis Day. Itieno Imbanga reports. Glossis is an airborne infectious disease that affects the lungs and sometimes other organs of the body as revealed by medical experts. Tuberculosis is caused by a, a bacteria known as a mycobacteria tuberculosis. Intensive global efforts have been taken to combat tuberculosis, which reports say is curable, though if left untreated, can claim millions of lives. A visit to the infectious disease hospital, Ikorekmene, Akwaibom State, one of the referral centers, for tuberculosis treatment reveals that more than 3,000 patients have been diagnosed, treated, and cured of tuberculosis between January 2023 to 2024. Anyone that shows any signs of TB, I send them to the lab, and then when the result is out, and they are seen by the doctor, I commence them on tuberculosis therapy. Last week Friday. It was last week Friday I started noticing chest pains. After three days, I started After coughing out blood. So I came to the hospital for treatment. The nurse have asked me to give my sputum for test. When the result is out and I have TB, I will take the TB medications. The theme for this year's World Tuberculosis Day is yes, we can end TB. Etienne Banga, NTN News. We'll take a break now and Panorama returns shortly. The Council of Our Fathers. I will urge and advise our younger generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. I believe we have fought one civil war too many in this country. So those who experience it will run away from it. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Federal Ministry of Water Resources has provided three communities in Urumi, Essa, Northeast local government area of Edo State, with two solar boreholes and one generator powered borehole. And will you call reports? Commissioning this 
It was an atmosphere of excitement for the people of Hualo who came to witness the official inauguration of the portable water by the state governor represented by the Commission of Water Resources, Asi Jibril. Both women, men, boys in this local government, we thank them, we thank them, we continue to thank them. The guest speaker and professor of exploration geophysics, Professor Isaac Aibedion, lectured on the importance of water, supporting the popular opinion that water is life. The community representative, Prince Emmanuel Okosun, appreciated the stakeholders that made the project a reality. The commissioner also inaugurated that in Idomo Jaguar quarters. Thereafter, the government team moved to Ubiarumu quarters where the third water project was inaugurated. When we provide, we will go back to our various uh, destinations. It is now the responsibility of the community to take ownership of the water, to protect it, so that the water, the facility will not be vandalized. Minister of Water Resources and Sanitation, represented by the Managing Director, Babda Sali Ahmed, said the theme of this year's Water Day celebration is apt. The need for water is universal. For, for the sustenance of life and um, therefore if access is denied either to portable water or inadequate supply it can be a cause of strife in uromi only okolo and a new Karuma Gigi, host community to persons with disabilities, is the latest to feel the warmth of relief this Ramadan as it welcomed senior special assistant to the president on persons with disabilities. Mina Daniels reports that the presidential aide is walking the talk by actualizing policies of the president aimed at leaving no one behind. Karama Gigi pays host to more than 500 people with disabilities. That's one challenge taken care of. These people require food items and other essentials to survive and feel a part of society. This needs is what the senior special assistant to the president on people with disabilities is here to answer to. Everybody knows that it's hunger in the land, but government alone cannot do. So we need to partner. And government has already partnered with the NIA, NIA Foundation and we are going to go a long way in making sure that we execute a project in line with the renewable agenda of, of President Bola Amitinebu. Honestly, we appreciate them. May Almighty God bless them. And I want to use this opportunity to call on others, NGOs. To copy from them. Periodic visitations like this signpost the president's commitment to carrying all Nigerians along, regardless of how lowly placed. During the holy month of Ramadan, the foundation do give out relief packages in um, Nigeria. Last year, the foundation gave out over 20,000 relief packages, and this year, uh, this year, this year too, we are giving out about such number. It's also a lead for other good-spirited Nigerians to follow. For Anna uh, and her family with two kids, what happened here today is a huge relief, I must say. Because for the past few weeks, she has not been able to feed her family, neither uh, was it possible for her to take her children to school. So this intervention here today, it is indeed a huge relief. And so it's a clear and call for others to keep into this collaboration in Abuja, Mina Daniels, and News. Reducing the prevalence of substance abuse, especially amongst the youth, medical experts and key drivers of drug de demand reduction campaigns say government must rise to the responsibility to entrench an anti-drug culture in the country. Elizabeth Omori reports that this was the message at a forum designed to interrogate factors promoting drug misuse and addiction. Data by the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency show that more than 14 million Nigerians abuse drugs. As a global concern, the problem the agency says is driven by a range of factors. Abubakar Salami, for 12 years, was involved in illicit substances. He says peer pressure, lack of parental care, and social distress promote the menace. 
for me, I identified that there was something hindering success for me, which was those substances, right? So I started channeling ways to stop those substances. Then I started fasting and praying, also started exercising rigorously. And this forum provides Nigerians a platform to share ideas, drop adoptable strategies to reduce threats, and give hope to families dealing with the social problem. People now order drugs with their phones. So we should wake up to that reality that this menace will not only consume the users, it's going to consume the whole society. Chasing office, chasing position, thinking that when you get all that you come back, they will enjoy it. And you have lost them to, uh, to, to, to drugs. Fathers should take responsibility. Following the UNODC 2023 World Drug Report that warns on expansion of illicit drug markets, they insist parents must be extra vigilant to be abreast of behavioral changes in their children and government should prioritize access to treatment services. Elizabeth Omori, NTU News. Now, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has been lauded for equipping Yobe State with sophisticated firefighting apparatus to bolster efforts of the state government in preventing incidences of fire outbreaks in the state. Governor May Malabuni gave the commendation shortly after inspecting the newly procured equipment for the Federal Fire Service Yobe State Command. Yunus Asuliman reports. That is Governor May Malabuni there test running the 1,000 litre capacity advanced firefighting vehicle procured by the federal government and deployed to only six state commands across the Federation. The Yobe State Command of the Federal Fire Service happens to be among the luckiest to have the equipment. The vehicle can also carry 500 litres of foam chemical compound for use in fighting fuel and implementable liquid fires, among others. In the past, we don't used to have this kind of uh, sophisticated equipment, highly digitalized uh, for multi-purpose fire incidences. This is a very good one and a commendable one. But just that I want to draw the attention of the Federal Fire Service here, Yovich State Chapter. You know, our maintenance culture up here is very poor. You have to very, you have to take very good care of this equipment. In this zone, it's only Yobe and Borno that happen to be among the states that have been, that benefited from the ITSA. The vehicle has now been officially added into the inventory of firefighting equipment of the state command. In the matter, Yunusa Suleiman, NTA News. Now, Nigerians and neighboring communities in Niger and the Bene and Benin Republic have reacted to the reopening of borders and ECOWAS' decision to lift the economic sanctions imposed on Niger. The sanction, especially border closure, has affected businesses in neighboring communities in Nigeria and Benin. Musa Babalu reports. This was the situation at this ever busy border post between Nigeria and Niger Republic in Gatsana State as at February 2024. The border was closed and the area is deserted with zero activities following the sanctions imposed on Niger. This woman from GBIA border community in Gatsana lamented that the restriction of vehicular movement across the border is affecting them. There is no means of transportation, so we decided to walk to visit our family over there, she says. This farmer said the closure of border has affected the social and economic well-being of the people. So this border, people that should go to buy, we will enter to buy. His view corroborates that of the Arewa Economic Forum that says the restriction of movement of goods and services affected a 13 billion naira business on a weekly basis. And this is the situation at the niger benin Republic border. Hundreds of trucks were blocked from going or coming. We spent days here and most of the perishable goods we are to deliver are spoiled, he says. However, there was a sign of relief following ECOWAS' decision to lift the economic embargo on Niger, Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea. This decision is based on humanitarian considerations, especially as we are in the month of Lent and Ramadan. 
President Bola Tinibu has directed the opening of Nigeria's land and air borders with the Republic of Niger with immediate effect. The president said the directive is in compliance with the decisions of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of States and Government at its last extraordinary summit in Abuja. We must approach these issues with a sense of unity and commitment to the well-being of our people. Borders are now opened. Movement of goods and services have resumed in Jibia, Kwangwalam, Kamba and Ilela in Katsena, Kebi and Sokoto states. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Back in Yobe State, Governor May Malabuni has commiserated with the management, staff and students of the Federal University Gashua over the unfortunate fire disaster which claimed the life of a student. In a statement, the governor condoled with the family and the university community over the death of the young and promising student. The governor, however, called on the university and all other institutions in the state to take proactive measures against possible fire outbreaks. Meanwhile, the governor has directed the State Emergency Management Agency to provide relief materials to the affected students for their immediate use. And Christians today converged in different denominations to mark Palm Sunday to commemorate the Christian belief in the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem when he was greeted by cheering crowds waving palm branches that set out on the ground along his path. According to the Holy Bible, in the Christian tradition, it is the first day of the Holy Week and the Sunday before Easter. It is a time to remind Christians to welcome Jesus Christ into their hearts and be willing to follow him. The service on Palm Sunday includes a reading of the Passion, the story of the suffering and crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Details of Palm Sunday reports will be brought to you in our subsequent bulletins. A next is sports update with Badi Adele. Ladies and gentlemen, there shall be no jollof wars. Please welcome Nigeria. The 13th edition of the African Games ended Saturday in Accra, Ghana, with Team Nigeria finishing second in the overall standings after securing a total of 121 medals, including 43 gold, 33 silver, and 41 bronze. The Nigerian boxing team contributed to the success, winning eight gold medals in the finals they qualified for, with the women boxers winning five gold medals in their respective categories. The men secured three gold medals, while the team also owned two silver medals. However, the under-23 women's team in three-on-three -three basketball were unable to defend their title and had to settle for silver after losing 11-21 to to Mali in the final. Coming to these all African games, I think um, the girls um, really had a very good uh, showing. You know, they, they were determined, but you know, uh, today we had to play back to back. We didn't have enough time to look at the, the Mali team and um, try to decipher the, the way they would have played us. But we're not complaining, we are happy with the silver medal. Earlier, the men's handball team Golden Arrows had won bronze by defeating Benin Republic 38 to 20 in the final of the event to claim Nigeria's first handball medal in 21 years and their fourth overall at the African Games. Back home, Canopilas recorded a slim one win over Sporting Lagos in their match the 27 encounter of the Nigeria Premier Football League to end a winless run of five games. While the Savannah Derby between Doma United and Gombe United ended 1 all. Seven more games are built for Sunday, with leaders Lobby Stars at home to Bayelsa United, Quara United and Nyimba International World Trade Tacos, while Remo Stars and Bendel Assurance have a date. With Sports Update, Badi Adeleye, NT News. That's Panorama today. I'm Zenra Dingwon. Thanks for sharing this time with us.
Embrace the wisdom of our ancestors as we explore the timeless wisdom of Nigerian proverbs. Proverbs are palm oil. 